We going all the way in. Yes, sir. I ain't even know it. Got the revelation. Now I got to own it. Uh-huh. Where's the JG and my after bush shining? I'm a threat to the enemy and that's on promise. Good evening, good people. We still at the table. Listen, and I can't wait for us to lean into this message a little more. Y'all ready? Right now, the glow up band about to take you into worship. Y'all ready? Let's go. Woo! You are the living yes, sir. Mm. You are the living <laughs> and get your communion cups out maybe you know you want to partake in the lord's supper today we're going to teach about it lean into it we talked about it sunday but i'm going to break it down a little more tonight give you something to make sure that you know what you're doing when you do what you do you hear what i'm saying hey hey who is it baby word yeah Tell somebody, get ready to let them know that we in the afterglow tonight, and I don't want you to miss a moment of this, all right? Get your pens and paper, your notepads out. Get ready to take notes. Something might be said that uh, be sure to prick your heart. Teach you something. The living word. Yeah. So good, so good, so good, so good to connect with you tonight. We're going to lean into this message. We are at the table. We're talking about how God is actually the living word. Thank you, Glow Up Ben, for helping making sure that we set the tone. That is the maestro himself, Fred Hammond. If you've never heard that song, listen, we love, love, love what God is doing in this moment and hope that you are excited and engaged as we are at the table and dealing with this series at the table. Stay with me for just a little second. You see, last week was absolutely bananas, man. I hope you watched it. And if you did not watch the whole entire live experience for the Afterglow EP, go back and check it out. It was absolutely energizing. The anointing of God was there. The presence of God was there. We've heard so much great feedback about things that were said and things that were done in that moment. Listen, I hope that you have downloaded the EP and that you watched that live, man. We might have to release that. It was crazy, crazy, crazy in here. Listen, tonight we're going to talk about being at the table and we're dealing with the communion table, right? We're here at the communion table. Communion is one of those things, if you're a believer, that we do in church uh, all the time. And I think most of us understand the dynamics of what it is, but I really want to lean in to give you some perspective and some revelation about the power that is represented in this little cup. Yeah, this is just a symbolism. It's really not about the cup. It's more about what's in the cup. Why do we call it communion? Why do we take it? Why do we, what do we do? Why do we do this on first Sunday or third Sunday or second Sunday, wherever you do it in your fellowship? Listen, communion, communion, communion is known by many names. Some people call communion, thank you, call communion the Eucharist. 
and other people call it the Lord's Supper, right? The Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. First thing I want you to understand, there is no place in Scripture where it specifies that the preparation of serving communion has to be done by a pastor or a clergy. It's just something that we do to set order in church. But communion, as you learned in the pandemic, biblically can be taken at any time. Communion is one of those things that you can, in your house, with your family, engage in, in the Lord's Supper, right? So when you deal with it, three main views that we face as we're dealing with communion. We talk about the practice of communion. We deal with the bread that actually, the bread and the wine that actually becomes the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. This is the Catholic term that they deal with. The bread and the wine, an unchanged element but Christ's presence by faith is made spiritually uh, in a realm for us. And the bread and the wine has unchanged elements that is used symbols that represents Christ's body and his blood in remembrance of his enduring sacrifice. Communion basically points to a moment, a commemoration in time, where we deal with the moment of reflection, where we remember the crucifixion. Not only do we remember the cru crucifixion, but the crucifixion actually took place at the same time as the Passover was observed. You do remember biblically that in Egypt, when the children of Israel were brought out of Egypt and redeemed, that, Jesus, that, that the God said, put the blood on the doorpost and let every house have a lamb. And the blood that's on the doorpost and every house that has a lamb will then symbolize that the death angel has to pass over. Well, the same revelation that happened in Hebrews, I mean, in, in, in the Old Testament with the Hebrews in the redemption of Israel is the same time that Jesus got on the cross as the sacrificial lamb shed his blood. So death has to pass over you. The reality is that when you deal with this, that's the significance of the bread and the wine. Why bread? Not just any type of bread, but a bread then that is unleavened, right? Unleavened, has no yeast in it. Leaven symbolize sin. And so bread without leaven symbolizes the holiness of God. So it's not just any bread that we take. It is the unleavened bread or a wafer <laughs> or a cracker, however you see it, right? But it's all symbolic, not to get into any religious rhetoric or routines, but really the revelation that bread, whether it's a cracker or whether it's uh, some Hawaiian bread <laughs> or whether whether it's a it's some 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 wonder bread that the reality is the bread symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ right who then we rejoice because we're no longer slaves to fear we are sons and daughters of the most high god so when we come to the lord's table when we come to the lord's table it should not be a sad moment it should actually be a celebration coming to the lord's table is not a funeral it's a celebration of life that has been given in exchange for one. It is a memorial service, a time of thanksgiving, a time of confession, a time of remembrance. And so as we look back at what Christ did on the cross, we also look to the future of what he's ultimately doing, going to do in our lives, as well as we stand in the moment of what he's doing in us right now. The Apostle Paul deals with this in 1 Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, and really he's telling of a story of something that took place in all the Gospels. In the book of John, the 13th chapter, it says, before the Passover celebration, remember it's not a funeral, it's a celebration, Jesus knew that the hour had come and the time had come for him to leave this world and return to his father. He loved the disciples so much during this ministry that now he's sharing with them that in my departure, I'm still going to leave a symbol. Yes, you have my spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of you, but there's a symbol, a symbolism that I want you to always partake in at Passover time to bring you into the remembrance of this moment. So he not only deals with the commemoration and deal with the celebration, he also deals with the community. Communion is about community and fellowship one to another and coming together in Luke 22:14. 14. And when the time came, Jesus and his apostles sat down together, where? At the table. And Jesus said to them, I have been very eager 
to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. And I tell you now, I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. One would say this Passover meal or this last supper, in fact, was his last supper. That's why we call it the last supper, because it was the last supper that Jesus ate with his disciples in community before he took his place on the cross to be the sacrificial lamb for our sins. While he was there dealing with community, he had a very important conversation. One of the things he said at the table was, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, I want you to understand that this journey that you've been on with me and following me gives you a pathway to God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also says, he says, if any man loves me, he will also keep my word. He's having conversations at the table. It's nothing like good conversation that you have over a meal. And this is the type of uh, of revelation that Jesus is releasing to his disciples as he's preparing them and himself to go to the final place. He also says, don't let your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Peace I leave with you and peace I give to you. He's saying, I'm giving you the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to be with you always. Jesus also says in this conversation, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So while he's sitting here, these are this is the dialogue or conversations that he's having with his community before he takes his final uh, he he takes his final uh, process to the cross. And it's important because while he's sitting at this table, this is also the time when Judas, <laughs> when Judas betrayed him. He's knowing that Judas is about to betray him, and he says, "Listen, whoever's about to betray me, don't take a long time. Hurry up and do it quickly." And he, Judas sitting there trying to act like he's not the one. And Jesus says, the person who who dips his hand uh, with me is the person that's about to betray me. He dips his hand knowing and identifying that Judas is the one. So it is at this communion table that Judas betrays Jesus in a moment for some coins, right? (laughs) He lets him and Judas hurry up and dismiss himself. And then they continue on in the process of communion. And here's the part where I really want you to understand the act of the celebration. First thing he says, I always say that when we peel back the first layer, we're peeling back the separation between God and man. We're peeling back anything that brought us separation, anything that hindered us. Uh, In scripture, it was the veil that was torn, right? The separation between God and man. When we peel that back, we're saying now we have free access. We have free access to God. We have free access to the presence of God. When we peel it back, nothing can get out of our way. Nothing can hinder us. No sin can separate us. Nothing can separate us from having access to God. And when we peel back, then we have this cup. And he, and the Bible says, and then he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, take, eat this and share it amongst yourself for you will not drink this wine again until the kingdom of God comes. So the first thing we always acknowledge that sits on the top is the bread. And he took the bread and gave thanks to God for it. He broke it into pieces. Of course, it was bigger than this. Remember, it's symbolism and gave it to his disciples. And listen what he says, something that seems a a little strange. He says, this is my body, which was given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. He's literally telling them that you will become what you eat, that here, this is a part of me. You are becoming one with me in fellowship with me. There is a purging, a Passover, a a healing that is represented in this moment. And when you do this, do it to remember the sacrifice that I did it once and for all. No longer do you have to slay the lamb. No longer do you have to put the blood on the doorpost. No longer do you have to take it and eat it, take the and eat the sacrificial lamb, because now the symbolism that comes into communion now gives you access and opportunity. He says, "Do it in remembrance of me." At church, then we say, "And now take and eat 
Amen. Right? And so in the body that is now given to you, do it in remembrance of me. This celebration, this bread represents the body of Christ. This bread is the bread of life that that satisfies our spiritual hunger. In essence, he's saying you no longer need to be hungry for spiritual things because I have provided for you all things and everything you need. The bread signifies life. So when Jesus breaks the bread, gives it to his disciples, he's literally saying that my body is life. He's saying, I'm giving you life that will be broken for you so that you might have life. He says, take my life in exchange for your life. Give me your life. I'm going to give you my life. Take my life in exchange of your life. And when you give me my, when you give me your life, I give you my life. And that life you have more abundantly. The broken body of Jesus now brings us into the significance of of the breaking of bread and believers signifying that now we have fellowship one to another, fellowship one to another. We exchange life for life and we no longer have spiritual hunger. Are you getting that? I hope that this makes sense because a lot of times in church, we do things that we don't understand and we do it because they say we're supposed to do it. But I really want you to understand the power and the significance of communion because it's not just a transaction transactional situation. It is a transformational situation. It is a a moment of transformation, a moment where you accept his life for your life. Verse 20 says, and after he took that bread, he took the cup. He took the cup. Here it is again, the cup, another In the way we package it in the modern day, another veil, another separation, perhaps for storage. But the truth is, uh, there's a peeling back that now gives you access, now gives you access. And he takes the cup, and he takes the cup of wine, and he said, this cup, this cup, the container, what's holding it, right, is the covenant uh, between God and his people. And when you come into agreement, you confirm that the, that this juice, this wine, is a symbolism, again, a symbolism of a sacrifice of his blood that was now shed and poured out for you. The cup, then, is your portion. The cup symbolizes this is your portion. This is your part. This is what you need. It's not a jug. It's not a pitcher. It's just a cup because you need a measure. You need a portion that belongs to you. And in the measure and the portion that's been belonged to you and assigned to you, then God has contributed or added just what you need in your cup. Everything you need is in your cup and he has shed or given his blood and that blood is the life of the body. And so inside of your body is blood and if there's no blood running in your veins, there is no life. And so the blood now is in the body and what that blood happens uh, when it was poured out, it now has death. And so when Jesus um, poured out his blood, excuse me, and his body, it now symbolizes that we have exchange for him. <clears throat> so then blood is the life of the body. And when, it blood, when it's poured out, death occurs. So he says, hey, this is mine so you can live. Take the blood. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you, and I'll apply to you everything that you need. The blood that was shed for us, the blood that was given to us, the blood that he willfully and freely gave to wash away all of our sins. The blood is the life of the body. And so he says, now take this blood and drink. When you take this blood and drink, it's not really blood. That would kind of be weird, right? It is is wine, the wine that is a symbolism. Don't forget, it's just a symbolism of the revelation. And when you do this and you drink, you do so and you receive the same grace or the same preparation or the same sacrifice of God pouring out a covering over you, over your house, over your family. And so anytime you find yourself in a condition or position where you need to remember or celebrate or rejoice in the fact of his, him giving his life in an exchange for you in transformation. It doesn't have to be first Sunday or third Sunday. You can always come to the table and partake in Holy Communion. That Holy Communion brings you into a, a, a moment of, of clarity and sanctification. And scripture often says that when you do this, you know, <clears throat> you examine yourself. You say, God, if there's Anything in my heart, anything in my life that I've said or done, any sin in my life that's not like you, wash it. Wash it from my heart. Wash it from my life. Um, Anything, uh, any sins of omission, sins of commission, things I've done 
intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, I want to I want to be right before you or whole or made righteous before you. And so when I partake in your communion, I partake in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the suffering of your son. And, and, and so we, 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 we eat the bread and we drink the wine and we have that word communion, right? Or fellowship where we become one. So when we when we eat the bread and we drink the wine, then we have sweet fellowship, sweet communion. And, and when God sees me, he sees his son. And when God sees me, the debt for my sins and the sacrifice that should be made, uh, he sees his son making that sacrifice on my behalf. And, and I become one in him. So when you see me, you see him. And he sees himself. He sees his son when he sees me because now we're one. And, and I celebrate what God has done, and I celebrate what he's doing. And so when I take the Lord's Supper, I'm now in covenant with him. I'm in relationship with him. And, and by covenant, I mean I leave from this moment, and I live a new way. And I begin to follow God's principles and his patterns, and I, in exchange, have given him my life for his. Uh, I accept his life. And I give him mine. So, 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 so that's really the essence of what communion is all about, to be in communion, right? To be in fellowship. And so I hope you understand it's not a set occasion. It's a commemoration. It's a celebration, right? It's a conversation. It's sitting in community. It's, it's coming together in exchange. It's not spooky. It's not weird. It's not strange. It's just him once and for all, <laughs> settling the debt on sin and then in exchange giving you his life. So perhaps you are at home right now and you've uh, learned and gained a greater understanding. Maybe it was just an affirmation or a confirmation on what you already uh, believed. Now we have fellowship and communion. Maybe you want to take communion. Maybe you took communion while we were watching. Maybe you understand. But in this moment in time, now that you get that the bread is life, the, the bread is life and the wine represents the blood that was shed, the exchange of his life for your life. This is not a transactional relationship. This is a moment of transformation and there's no more sin, nothing else holding you back, nothing else separating you from this moment. All you have to do is believe and receive and accept the sacrificed life of Christ that has been given to you and welcome into the kingdom of God. No clergy has to be there, man. You can do it with your family any moment, any time. And right now you can, you can eat the bread and you can drink the wine. And when you eat the bread and drink the wine, you come into sweet fellowship and communion with the Father. I want to give you an opportunity now as we partake in it and as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of it. Thank you for life and life more abundantly. Thank you for giving us life and life more abundantly. And then we, we drink the wine. And when we drink the wine, we show forth the fact that he shed his blood for us. And may there be a banner, a blood covering over your house and over your family. And may everything that's been assigned to you as a result of his sacrifice be released to you. Perhaps you're not a believer and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins and you want to give your life to Christ tonight, right here, right now, is one of the greatest moments you can do that. You hear me? All you got to do is pray the prayer on the bottom of the screen or one like it and accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior. He'll come in your heart, right? Exchange your life for his and he'll teach you how to live the very best that he called you to live. I'm so excited about your future. And if you made that prayer, you just text new life to 91694. Somebody's going to connect to you, and man, you just made the best decision of your life. Welcome to the table. You can have sweet communion, all right? Can y'all help me celebrate with a hand emoji and give God praise for all the people that just came, reconnected, gave their life to Jesus tonight? And those of you that are believers and watch the afterglow, I need you to get your offering ready. So where you grow. That's right. So where you grow. I ask for you to at least give a seat of $20 on a Tuesday. Three ways you can give on the bottom of the screen. You can mail it in, you can text to give, or you can give on the app. Give on the app, mail it in, text to give, and God's going to do unto you what he said. He'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. $20 on a Tuesday and sow into the kingdom. It's coming back to you. Good measure, press down 
shaking together and running over. Come on, when we so we say, I'm a tither and a giver, I have more than enough. <laughs> I'm living in my overflow. I'm living in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life. I just believe you're living there for the rest of your life, and you ought to get excited about it because you got your portion. <laughs> All your sins been washed away, and the blood is covering you. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope that you have a happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you and your family have sweet communion, fellowship one to another and with each other. Make sure tomorrow you lock in and rock with us one night with the king. It's going to be incredible. Priscilla Hilliard is going to be with us. We're going to worship the king, fellowship with your family. <laughs> Don't eat too much, or if you do, make sure you exercise. But enjoy your life, all right? Stay safe. God bless you. Sweet communion, all right? That's the most important meal that you will have this season. Let's go. Hey. Woo. Peace out, y'all. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. And he gave thanks. <laughs> Sweet communion. Yeah. Welcome to the afterglow. Hey. Yeah. So we have. Thank you.